Hey guys, uh, so today I'm going to be breaking down five fundamental mistakes that most players make and is preventing them from winning rounds, winning ranked games. Basically, I'm just going to go through common mistakes that people make on attack and try to explain to them how they should be doing it instead and try to help you guys out so that you're able to win more ranked games and more rounds and stuff like that. Uh, the five tips that I'm going to be covering today are going to be on the screen right now. Um, saving drone and prep phase, planning a push, one to mental pushes, uh, not bringing necessary ops and not playing vertically. I'm going to break them down in more detail throughout the video. Uh, the timestamps to each of these tips will be either next to these tips or in the description or below. Actually, they might be both. I might have them on the video and in below just so you guys are able to click on it because I know when you click on the timestamps in YouTube videos, they'll take you to that exact moment, but I also have them on here in case you want to just like scroll for yourself. Um, but basically, I'm just going to be breaking down how you can correct these five mistakes that you're doing on attack. And hopefully you can win more ranked games and more rounds uh, just by correcting these mistakes. Okay, so the first tip I'm going to be covering is saving or using your prep drone cam like efficiently. Um, a lot of people, whenever they get their prep drone cams, they kind of just seem to go and run them immediately in the building and try to go find the bomb, which is cool and all because you want to know where the where you're going to be attacking. But more often than not, you can use your sound or the rotations of the defenders to pretty much figure out where they're coming from. For example, if I put my drone like near the front door and I see somebody coming up from the basement stairs, or if I see someone running down the main stairs, it's safe to assume that the site is upstairs or downstairs based on where the people are coming from. Or uh, if they reinforce this hatch, I know they're downstairs for sure. Uh, but what you want to do, avoid doing is bringing your drone to the site. Now, I say that because often, more often than not, Say, for example, the, def the defending team is upstairs. If I know that, if I think they're upstairs, and I bring my drone right here, and I go to look, and somebody's playing anywhere in this vicinity, I lost my drone. And I don't think, in, in this game like Siege, where utility and knowledge on locations of the defenders is incredibly important, you want to keep all of the intel that you can to yourself. That way you're able to pretty much put yourself in an advantage when it comes to like late round situations. Or say you want to have a flank cam like somewhere up here in classroom. Or if you want to call, hey, someone's flanking your main stairs because they're upstairs and you're already inside a master. This camera is a lot more beneficial if you save it now and know where you know where the site is from either the sound or the rotation of the defenders instead of going to get your points by scanning the bomb so you know 100% that it's there. Like that, that, that stuff in the long game is just not that useful as we're saving your drone and using it for either a flank or to drone when you're in late round in a 3v3, 2v2 situation. It's going to prove you a lot more use in that situation than it ever will if you just go to throw away to figure out where the site is. Uh, also, if they have a mozzie, you don't want to give them any of your drones. And just overall, just having your drones is going to be super important in a game like Siege. Just due to the fact that Siege is completely based on intel and using utility. You don't want to more often than not swing people without knowing where they are. Because say now I'm out of my drone. I, I go to come up here. I throw my drone up through this door because I'm like, oh, I, I have one more cam left. I throw it through here. Boom, Jaeger's standing inside the trophy door, shoots my drone. Now what? What do I do? I have no cams. I have to rely on my team. My team's going to be annoyed with me because I have no cams. I have to constantly just wait before I push. Because I don't want... No matter what, even if I do lose my, my drone, I'm not going to just swing this door with no intel. Because, I mean, granted, I swing this door. Someone's standing right there. I'm dead. Uh, you just want to avoid pretty much all the situations. That's the importance of droning. So when it comes to overall like importance of your drone, you just have to understand that they are fundamentally almost as important as a life. Just because of the fact that you're able to gain intel without actually sacrificing your own body, you you can get intel. So like I know, hey, there's like my teammate's drone out. I know he's big window because there's a drone. Instead of someone coming over here dying, now we're in a four v five. I actually have I have all five of my teammates still, and we know the person's on big window. It's just things like that. Uh, you honestly just want to save your drone for you. Don't want to just go and waste them. Okay, so after you're done saving your drones and you know where the people are, you know where the site is, what you want to do then is plan a push. Uh, in a situation on a map like, say, Oregon, just because it's the map I'm on in this custom game, uh, what you want to do is usually situate yourself so that you understand what everyone's going to be doing in the prep phase. That is what you're preparing for. You're not just using this prep phase time to just sit on your phone and waste time. You usually want to sit this time and figure out, like, hey, like, where do you guys want to push? Where do you guys want to go for? Hey, I'm Maverick right now. What do you guys want me to open? We know they're upstairs. Yeah, I'll open up the attic wall. Can someone come with me to open the attic wall? You can have your Ash, your Zofia, your Buck, your Sledge, whatever you have for soft reach, really. Hey, I'm going to open a hole. Can you just, I'll make the wall soft. Can you just open it? That kind of thing. You just want to make sure that in when you're playing ranked, you don't want to be wasting your time like in the prep phase just kind of being idle. Because once you get into the round, if you don't have any of that like stuff figured out, you're going to load in. All five of your people are going to be standing and spawning and be like, okay, um, well, we know they're upstairs. And, and then what? 
Then you're spending that time, that vital time, instead of using your preparation time that you had, the 45 seconds that you had to prepare, instead of you're using the time in the round to say, okay, I'm going to open the attic wall. Can someone come with me? Hey, can someone go over to master balcony? Hey, can someone go to big window? That kind of thing. You don't want to be doing that in the middle of the round because that's precious time. You only have three minutes to work with and you have to plant the bomb. Uh, now, granted, three minutes is a decent amount of time and you can work with it. It's just more often than not, you don't want to be forced to cram in time and rush yourself and just pretty much be... Not, have, not being able to clear all your corners, not being able to check everything, because simply put, you're running low on time. Hey, I don't have enough time to drone the bottom of this. I, I didn't pre-place this drone anywhere in tower, so can we're going to have to drone all three floors of tower. We're going to have to, hey, can you drone out T3? Like, like right now, it's just all that stuff that like can happen throughout the round. It, it all fast-paced, losing drone. There's a lot of things that can happen, so you want to make sure you have as much time as you can to work with. So you basically want to make sure that you're using your early time to basically just set up get an idea where everyone's going make sure people can change spawns if you know you guys are doing a master take you don't want to spawn back alley because that's another what 15 20 seconds that's wasted because you have to run to the front of the like front of the map it's just uh, things like that you want to make sure you're using your prep phase to actually prepare and plan what you guys are going to do make sure when you pick an operator you have a plan what you're going to do like hey i know they're going to go downstairs so i'm going to pick a bond so i can get the hatches that kind of thing you just want to be you want to be planned out you don't want to just go into the round all willy-nilly thinking you can crouch walk in a site with ash just because you're ash like you have to actually understand what you want to do and give an idea like what you're planning on pushing that way that you can win the round. Alright, so the next common mistake that I see a lot of players make is one-dimensional pushes. Um, for example, I'm going to use downstairs basement on organ. I notice that a lot of times that you'll catch players in ranked or in lower elo all pushing through this door. Now, this can work in a sense, but it's not going to, like, more often than not. Like, it can work, don't get me wrong. If the entire enemy team decides to peek you guys outside and just dies, yes, it'll work. But if they don't peek you and they just all hold angles, seconds. they're going to win like 90% of the time due to the fact that they all, all five of them can focus on this one area and don't have to worry about any diversity in the push. What you want to do in, in, in ranked or in competitive or in anything at all, what you want to do is make sure that you're splitting up with like people so you can't have all the defenders holding an angle on you. For example, when you're pushing downstairs on Oregon, not all five people should be sitting outside. At best, you have two, maybe three people here, just so they're able to, hey, they're, they're extending out here, you have to have someone burn your eight flashes, somebody hold this door, and the next guy getting ready to nade this, that kind of thing, that makes sense, but when you're going for that, you don't want to have all five people here just kind of waiting for you to clear this shield, because that's a lot of burnt time and a lot of, like, the round gone, because you're just all sitting here waiting for either a free pick, or for two people to do something while the rest of you guys just kind of stand there AFK. So what you want to do in a situation is send three people to maybe the back blue door and then send two more people up into tower. The reason that you want to send people up into tower is because it diverses as what, like, what the defenders can like play. You can have one person just to hold this guy's flank if you guys don't have a nomad and have the other one play on the back tower stairs. So for example, a common position to be played on Oregon is on this pillar. So once you guys are your three people here, get this guy from elbow cleared out because you naded him or made him like any do, killed him or anything just forced him to either reinforce that wall then you guys have this guy on pillar pretty much in a stuck situation because he can't play anywhere he's forced to pretty much play in a no man's land where he's being shot at from either the back tower stairs or from you guys who have opened this wall now on his door and you're on his back stairs it's just it, you pretty much you, you get two kills for the price of one and he can't just focus on just one thing like say for example you're not pushing down the back stairs he, he's, he's free to play this as much as he wants he's free to just run around peek the door hey his teammates getting needed he walks up he, he's just doing he's doing whatever he wants because there's no one on his back stairs he has no pressure from there so he doesn't even have to hold the angle so what you want to do that's the biggest reason that you want to diverse to push that we the defenders can't all just stare at one thing and pretty much get a free kill they they have to make sure that they're splitting up their utility their people their man just so they're all other doing other things instead of just all five of them having one guy pillar having one guy literally sit on the staircase hold a pixel here have one guy this wall's open playing inside of e-box here have someone elbow just have their whole team focus on you instead what you want to do is make sure that they can't all five focus on you you have to split up their attention so that they're forced to make plays that they have to just so they can try to win around and then you're there with your better guns because attacking does have the better guns in these situations to where you're just able to collect your free kills and move on uh just so if anything i can help you from that one tip alone i'm sorry that's kind of a lot of rambling i'm i'm not sure if that wasn't clear but basically what i'm trying to say is make sure that you guys split up your pushes and don't always push together all right so this next tip that i'm going to be covering is going to be not bringing the necessary operators i do notice a lot of times in lower elo and sometimes high elo i'm not gonna lie there's there's some suspect games out there where you find yourself not bringing the operators that you need for attack 
Uh, you'll be playing on attack with uh, just five operators that you just don't need. You'll have an, an Ash, a Zofia, a Buck, uh, a Sledge, and a, a Nomad. And then you're sitting there, and you go into the push, and then you realize, hey, they're upstairs, or hey, they're downstairs, but for example, we're going to do upstairs. And this wall's reinforced, as it should be, because every ranked game, this wall's going to be reinforced. So then, you're, you find a film in a predicament where you're either forced to funnel through doorways, or just take overall unfavorable gunfights, just because... They're playing in positions where, all like I said, just even if it's not a one-dimensional push, even if you have one guy here, one guy on big window, one guy coming up white stairs, one guy on this window, at the end of the day, you're coming through a doorway and you're very limiting the way that you can push a site. Uh, you don't want to over-split up yourself as well just because of the fact that you guys can get swung or double swung from a team or you can get flanked and there's no one to hold your flank. You, you still have to stick together in a pack in some sense the fact that you need someone with you just so one can watch flank or someone can bring you utility, something like that. So what you want to do is really just make sure that you're always bringing a hard breacher. Make sure that you have something to get the stuff off the wall because they're going to probably have a bandit. If you don't have a, one of those, you can always just go below to the window and the window down here. And you can literally just shoot the stuff off the wall with a, a nade or Sophia or Ash charge. Just making sure that you always are prepared for anything. Uh, so like for, exact, for an example, if you're attacking this room right here, what you want to bring more often than not is a Maverick, an Ace, a Zofia, a Sledge, and a uh, Nomad. That's just like a good lineup that you can bring because for one, you can send your Maverick and Sledge or Maverick and Nomad to over to Big Tower. They can open up that wall. Maverick can make like a crouch hole with his Maverick and he can open up in the wall and you guys can come through Attic. That presents one push. You also have nades for the person that's most likely going to be playing inside of Attic. You have your ace. He can open up this wall. Sophia can go below. And if there's bandits on the wall or mute, she can literally just Sophia it from the window. She's pretty safe too because she can just prone and shoot the stuff off the wall. And you have your sledge for another set of grenades over here. So in case, hey, there's a shield here. Your Sophia's out of her impacts. You can nade it. You know somebody's playing in a bunker position. I don't know. Like, literally, uh, right close to this door, he can b bounce an aid off the door, that's a free kill. Just making sure that you're prepared for pretty much any common anchor spot or anchor position that you're going to be faced against, and just making sure you have a lineup that can deal with it is the biggest thing that I have to be, I could probably recommend while playing in lower elo or just in any elo at all. Because you're always going to need a hard breacher, you're always going to need something to get the stuff for the hard breacher, and just overall just going to need a, a good lineup if you want to win your attacks more often. Um, the last big mistake that you are more than likely making in ranked or in general is not playing vertically. Uh, I noticed that a lot of people just seem to not understand like the importance of playing vertically on most maps, and it's understandable that most people don't think that it's needed. But more, it's not that it's a necessity, but it is something for like a quality of life. For example, if a defending team is inside of either the ki like the kitchen meeting site or the kitchen di like the kitchen dining site here and you guys are going for a push, uh, more often than not, if you play vertically, you're able to clear out an entire site and get a plan off a lot easier If instead if you were just trying to open the wall and just take gunfights. Uh, I can give some examples and some pulls that you can make over just that site alone. Just give me a second. Okay, so this is a tad exaggerated. I was just doing it for reference, just making these excessive holes. By the way, you don't need this many holes. Um, but for example, when you're pushing on the site like here, and if you're able to open the meeting wall and play vertically, you're pretty much guaranteed a plant here, behind the common spot here, behind this little metal box, due to the fact that they can't really get back into site if you do have all these holes open. Uh, you have this hole here where you're able to watch for anyone coming in the green hall trying to deny the plant. You have holes all over site, of course. You have holes over security where a lot of people try to deny the plant from. You have holes over the security door. You have holes over for the, the door if anyone wants to rotate from the other bomb site. It's just overall, if anyone wanted to play in a position to deny the plant, you have a hole over it. And if you able to put like if you can implement verticality into your playstyle and into your team's like comp like compilation or comp I don't know the word man just I'm, I'm gonna edit this out man I'm not gonna edit out I'm just gonna look, just gonna suffer and deal with the tax but anyways verticality is gonna make your attacks a lot stronger and overall I feel like if you want to win more ranked games and win overall you should implement it into your playstyle and into your games. But yeah. That's all I have for you guys today in this video where I pretty much break down mistakes that you guys might be making here in games. Uh, I'm probably going to be dropping another one like this next Friday, basically explaining defending mistakes that a lot of people make. Uh, so you guys can look forward to that. But outside of that, I just have another one of my normal ranked gameplay videos coming Monday. Uh, if you guys want to watch that. And I'll be working on making like three videos a week, just making that a common thing around here just because... I've been talking to a couple of my friends, they say it's a lot better for me, and I, I want to do more for you guys, I want to put out more videos for you guys, I want to grow as a YouTuber and everything like that. 
Uh, so outside of that, uh, that's all I have for you guys today in this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Yeah.